I never thought, I mean, in all the crazy things that this channel has brought, I never thought we would see Retro Bass and featured in Japan. <laughs> it's like almost like lost in translation, isn't it? Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Konnichiwa. Welcome to Retro Bassin. We are hanging out today at the Retro Ranch. I've got some hot chili chips, I've got a ginger beer, and we just got a very special package from our Bass and Buds over in Japan. Let me uh, <laughs> put this away for a second. A few months back, I met a new friend on Instagram by the name of Teiji. He actually lives over in Japan. He is a antique lure aficionado and he and I follow each other and like each other's posts pretty often. We started a little conversation about bass fishing in Japan and it turns out he actually has a good friend who is the editor of a Japanese fishing magazine by the name of Top Tao. Now I had never heard of this magazine before but I immediately followed them on Instagram and yeah, it's another rabbit hole that, boy, uh, I hope you guys are ready for the ride. So Teiji actually asked me if I, I would like to have Retro Bassin featured in Top Town Magazine and sent me a list of questions which I would answer for him and then he would ultimately have translated into Japanese. So what I've got here is the hard copy of that magazine article. Uh, <laughs> I've seen a few previews of this on the Instagram page, but I cannot wait to see what's inside. So what we're going to do today on Retro Bass is we're going to crack open this package from Japan. And what I've got here is a little bit of a cheat sheet. These are the questions and answers in English. So in addition to look at the uh, <laughs> magazine in Japanese, we'll go through the English Q&A. Hopefully you Bass and Buds enjoy. By the way, if you guys have never had one of these ginger beers. Oh, hold on. It's a good brew. All right, so let's check this thing out. I am pretty excited to see this spread. Ooh. Please enjoy. <laughs> Teji, I will. <laughs> so what do we have here? All right, first off, I've got some decals from Top Tow Magazine. It says, Addicted to Top Water Fishing. If you guys ever want to see some wild stuff, head on over to the Top Tow Instagram page and give them a follow. They've got some old school gold over there. So that is pretty cool. I've got four decals from Top Tow. Ooh, <laughs> that is a pretty slap. Check that out. I don't know what that says, but it does say in the back of the bass, top water fishing. Awesome. I will say, as I follow more and more Japanese anglers on Instagram, they are some top water fishing fools. It is crazy, but... Uh, I, I think they have some folks who throw nothing but a head and big bud, I swear. It's pretty wild. So thank you for those. That's pretty cool. Uh, now we're going to get into, which looks like a couple of magazines. Okay, so this is Japanese most famous bass fishing magazine. This is called Basser. 
Oh, check that out. That is a good looking magazine. And <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my naivete, but it's backwards. <laughs> so rather than opening uh, this way, uh, the Japanese magazines are actually the opposite. That's pretty wild. Um, not that I could read them if they were the other way either. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. So this is the Monthly Bass Fishing Magazine Slow Down Game. Oh wow, that is very cool. Look at that. Uh, I've got a feeling I could go nuts on some of the lures and techniques that they feature. Yeah, in here. Very cool. Thank you, Teji. I will definitely take a look at this guy. <laughs> okay, here we are. This is the issue itself. Top Tao Magazine. Old and Sweet Fishing. And this is the seventh anniversary. Look at how gorgeous that cover is. And this is pretty wild. It actually goes around to the back. Oh man, it looks like that's a little head and crazy crawler in the back too. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I never thought, I mean, and all the crazy things that this channel has brought, I never thought we would see Retro Bass and featured in Japan. <laughs> it's like almost like lost in translation, isn't it? Uh, here we go. So I see a page that's bookmarked. Ah, that's wild. So there is the article on Retro Bassin. There's, uh, there's your host. <laughs> And there are some pictures that we uh, sent over to Teji. Uh, a few of these are from the road. A few of these I shot just for the magazine article. That is very cool. Oh, I see this. They've got a picture of a Strike King grass frog, which is the first lure that I ever caught a bass on. So I really appreciate that. That is too, too cool. Oh, <laughs> and I'm going the wrong way. I'm flipping the wrong way. So the article starts here. Oh, very cool. And it ends right there. Oh, that is awesome. And yeah, um, I can see a Q, I can see an A, uh, but Bass and Buds, that's about all that I can read of this. <laughs> all right, so using my handy dandy cheat sheet, the first question was, when did you start bass fishing? Well, I grew up in uh, Annapolis, Maryland, just off the Chesapeake Bay and some of its tributaries, including the Severn and the Magothy Rivers. Uh, I dig up some old photos in preparation for this episode, and this is the first recorded picture of an uh, old retro on a boat, and that is me with my Uncle Randy. So I think this was an old Boston whaler that we had. But grew up on the water, boating, fishing, that kind of stuff. The first boat that I ever had was this bad boy, a 13-foot Boston Whaler. This is this boat in our driveway sometime probably around 1986. This was the boat that I started to fish the Seven River for, for white perch, striped bass, and chained pickerel. What's so funny is, for some reason, my dad let me put a couple of bass boat seats in this thing, and I, I remember drilling holes into the deck of this Boston Whaler. I, I can't believe I did it at the time, but <laughs> the later mod of this literally had two bass boat seats in it. I guess I was always hoping to be a bass fisherman one day. Yeah, and here's a picture of me with a little spot that I caught, yes, yeah, sitting in one of those newly drilled bass boat seats. Ah, oh, talk about a way to ruin a nice whaler. <laughs> my fishing accomplice at the time was my best buddy Jay, and there's Jay with a, that looks like a retro bass and striped bass that he caught somewhere probably around Yance Creek. I kept on fishing and wearing cool clothes. Here is me with a nice little blue fish and jean shorts. By the way, it looks like I caught that thing on a Rapala minnow spoon, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, kept on fishing with my family, and my family has always been huge into fishing. 
So here I am with uh, my pop with a eight pound bluefish, we call it trolling on the old Chesapeake. Having that family connection to fishing is really what got me hooked, even though it was more sort of a saltwater, brackish water era of my fishing career. Okay, the next question says, uh, when did you catch your first largemouth bass and what lure did you use? While I was primarily fishing brackish tidal rivers at the time, I had an uncle that actually lived out in Howard County, Maryland, and he constructed his own probably three to five acre man-made lake. It's called Buckskin Lake, and he stocked it with largemouth bass. Now, the cool thing about Buckskin Lake for me is that before I first cast the line in that lake, I don't know that anyone ever fished for those bass. And I remember the first day I went down there with probably some of the worst bass fishing skills I've ever seen. And I caught over 25 bass, mostly on top water in the middle of the day. So the first fish that I ever caught was on Buckskin Lake and it was on this bait, an old school original Strike King grass frog. This is in the natural frog pattern, but that first bass that I ever caught, it was on a 3 8 ounce chartreuse grass frog. Now I say caught, but I don't know that I actually got this fish to the boat. I remember I was casting this bait right by a weed edge on Buckskin Lake and a little two pound bass came up and just cracked my lure. Now he cracked it and he took it down about three feet into the water column. The water was so clear I could literally see him down there just shaking <laughs> that grass frog like a dog with a two choy. In my excitement, I don't know that I remembered to set the hook, so I don't know how close to the boat I got that first bass, but in my book, I count that as the first bass that I ever caught, and it was on this bait. That little farm pond in Howard County was ultimately what got me hooked on the sport of bass fishing and probably bass fishing lures as well. So here are a few pictures from around old Buckskin Lake. Uh, this is your humble host with a nice little one pounder. <laughs> that I caught fishing from a paddle boat. And that paddle boat was sort of interesting. So here is me uh, from the shore with another bass. And you can see there's that paddle boat in the background. I would actually kind of mix my fishing up. Sometimes I would walk around the bank and cast, but honestly, even then, I love to get in a boat and cast parallel to the shoreline with some of the different baits that I got from Bass Pro Shops. So this picture is probably the first bass that I ever caught on a spinner bait. And this one, uh, well, it's kind of appropriate for this week. I don't know if you guys heard, but we just lost Lonnie Stanley, the founder of Stanley Jigs. Well, Lonnie, wherever you are, this one's for you because this old bass was caught on an old school Stanley wedge. And here's another one that, uh, boy, I should probably put on the old LinkedIn. Uh, it is me with uh, a nice little bass that I caught on a Strike King uh, triple wing buzz bait while wearing some jean shorts. <laughs> but check out that tackle box, guys. I wish I could zoom in to see, but you know, there is some old school 1993 gold in that bad boy. All right, so the next question is, why are you interested in retro fishing lures? Um, you know, I would say that I'm interested in a lot of different things considered retro these days. Whether it is clothing, maybe some old school books, vinyl records, and definitely fish and tackle. Um, if it is old, it is gold to me. Now why is that? I don't know. I, I think that when I think of fishing lures, there was so much creativity back in the day. Lure designers were not afraid to take risks and they came out with some crazy bait designs, some crazy colors, and quite frankly, some baits that were designed to catch fishermen, not fish, which I love. I love that aspect of fishing. When you look at the old school worms, for example, literally they had to have an entire page dedicated to all the different colored jelly worms that you could get, for example. But nowadays, pretty much every worm that you see is some variation of green pumpkin. You know, maybe that's better for catching bass, but when it comes to making fishing fun, I don't know. I, I just like the creativity, the wild colors, the wild designs, 
that they had back in the day. The, my first real exposure to fishing lures came from this actual catalog. This is the 1991 Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World Master Catalog. You know, this came out long before there were Bass Pro Shops, literally probably about an hour from almost anybody in the continental United States. I think at the time this one came out, there might have been one or two others aside from the one in Springfield, Missouri. But basically, if you wanted to see the entire breadth of the current fishing catalog, you had to open up this bad boy. In 1991, I was a freshman in high school and I spent a ton of time going through this magazine. I mean, literally every page of this is almost kind of like my high school yearbook in a way. And I remember so many of these lures, even the ones that I didn't get, I definitely pined over many times. By the way, <laughs> for all of you youngins out there, I don't know if you knew this, but back in the day, what you used to have to do was literally fill out your order here <laughs> in the Bass Pro Shops magazine, and then you could mail it in, or you could actually call that 800 number, which still works today. So this was my first real exposure to bass fishing lures. It is the most nostalgic magazine probably of any in my collection. And in many ways, I've probably spent my adulthood trying to recapture the magic of this 1991 outdoor master catalog. And if you guys have seen my collection in many ways, I guess I have. All right, when did you start the Retro Bassing YouTube channel? This is a story. I graduated the University of Delaware with a degree in journalism in 1999 and soon took a job as managing editor of a little magazine known as the Big Game Fishing Journal. This is actually a copy of that magazine that I've got from 2004. And yep, there's your host Retro back when uh, I guess I used to fish shirtless for some reason. <laughs> Anyway, I served as the managing editor of this magazine till about 2006 when ultimately I got out of the fishing industry. What's crazy is during my time at Big Game, I actually fished less than I did before and certainly less than I did after my run in the magazine industry. So I got out of Big Game and in 2008, I ended up buying my first bass boat, which is a 18 foot, nine inch, I think, Skeeter. This was the boat that I took down to the tidal Potomac River and some of the reservoirs around Maryland and really started to learn a little bit more about the art of bass fishing. But back to the question of when I started the Retro Bassin channel. I actually started it in 2012. I went out and I bought this exact camera, a GoPro Hero 3. And I started to film myself fishing. I put up a couple of fishing videos with some copyrighted songs that ultimately um, got taken down, but I never got my channel off the ground. I actually had the first 12 episodes of this channel written back in 2012. Many of those episodes, by the way, I have not done yet. But I had the first 12 episodes written. Unfortunately, I just wasn't ready to be in front of the camera. And I had a couple dozen really frustrating days on the water and ultimately the whole project went on the back burner. So even though Retro Bassin was founded in 2012, I actually didn't put out my first video until 2018. Fast forward a few years later when I moved to Austin, Texas and I'm walking around the Bass Pro Shops up in Dallas. I stumbled across a boat that would change everything. And I'm talking about this, the 40th anniversary Bass Tracker Heritage. <laughs> One look at this boat and I knew that um, I had to have one. Now the trouble was this thing had been out at the time for almost a year. And so I think I ultimately got the last um, of these boats in Round Rock, Texas. But one look at this thing and I knew that um, I had to have it. Now a lot of folks are asking why I would ever go from a Skeeter to a Bass Tracker. And to be honest, the main reason was that the Skeeter didn't fit in my garage. 
And because the HOA, I was keeping the Skeeter off site and I was using it less and less. That tracker, it's got a folding tongue and it fits in my garage, which made all the difference. So I bought the tracker. Uh, as you see by the first episode of the Retro Bassin channel, I outfitted it with some old school electronics and the rest, Bassin Buds, is history. The last question, and this, is, uh, this one might surprise some of you Bassin Buds out there. But it says, what do you know about Japanese lures and do you have some? Do I have some? So in addition to being a total nut when it comes to old school tackle, I definitely have gone through a phase of being a total nut when it comes to Japanese tackle. I am talking baits by depths. I'm a katsu, evergreen. <laughs> if there is some hard to find Japanese swim bait, uh, chances are I might have one. So back to the question of, do I have some? I've got a few. <laughs> I will go through quickly some of my favorite Japanese swim baits that I have fish with. Obviously not too much today, but hey, Bass and Buds, maybe uh, some of these bad boys are considered old school at this point. One of my favorites was always this bait from Depths. This was the old Silent Killer. There were some really cool videos that I found on YouTube back in the day of this thing just kind of going through the water. It is a, I don't know if that's like a, a foam um, type bait, but it is a jointed swim bait that actually floats and just sort of creeps along the surface. And as its name implies, it's silent. You really can't talk about the uh, Depths Silent Killer without also mentioning this bad boy, the old Depths Slide Swimmer. And this is the 175. This, oh man, this was a mean swim bait for striped bass. But you know what? I've got a feeling I could do some serious damage on Lake Austin if we ever did a retro bass video featuring that bad boy. One of the cool things about Japanese lures is the fact that the designers are willing to take some pretty crazy chances. Uh, this is actually a swim bait from Daiwa, and notice that that bad boy is swimming on its side, and it's got a little bit of a buzz bait blade on it. What is the name of this thing? I forget, to be honest with you. Obviously, it's been a hot minute since I threw any of these bad boys, but I have caught some biggins on that guy. Speaking of depths, this is a bait uh, anybody in Texas probably knows pretty well who throws some big old swim baits for bass. I've also had some really cool baits uh, that I fished a good bit. Some from Evergreen, like this S-Drive. Uh, the Aimikatsu Javelin. And this is another nice one from Aimikatsu. I think this is called the SG, if I recall. See, and you guys thought my problems were just limited to retro lures. All right, before we wrap up our little Japanese tackle walkthrough, I gotta show you this. This is probably one of the coolest baits I've ever seen. Uh, this is a jointed claw <laughs> in a very old school color. Look at that. <laughs> Looks like something head would make, doesn't it? Oh man. So Bass and Buds, let me know. I actually do have this tackle. I have not uh, done a ton of swim bait fishing for obvious reasons. But if there's any interest, I definitely could get out there on the lake, maybe do a day with some of my old school Japanese lures. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Teiji, and also the entire staff over at Top Tow Magazine. Honestly, <laughs> I never dreamed that this little channel would be featured in a Japanese fishing magazine. And this probably is gonna be one of the coolest things that uh, I will look back on for, for many years. So Bass and Buds, definitely head on over and check out Top Town Magazine. They've got a pretty wild Instagram page that I follow and it might open up a whole new world of old school gold. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep it old and sweet. And definitely.
Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.